Hello everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the Hi-Tech from Lock Precision. This is a high power model rocket kit, but it can also be flown mid power. It's a lightweight rocket. And if you look at the projected altitudes that come on the package here, um, even with as small as an F-50 motor, this will fly to 350 feet with a full G motor up to about 2,000. And even with the smallest H motors, we're approaching heights of about 4,000 feet. Now, for this reason, I actually don't recommend using this for a level 1 certification. I've seen a whole lot of people use it and end up losing it, and they didn't get certified because it didn't recover the rocket, simply because it flies so high. So unless you have a really big launch field without trees and water and such, um, Fly this high power if you like, but do your certification on, say, a 4-inch uh, cardboard style rocket. Maybe the uh, Lock 4 or the Apogee Zephyr. Both of those I found are really good for doing your level 1. I'm of the mind of keeping it simple. Okay, So, however you want to do it. Um, I do really enjoy this rocket as a mid-power, though. I've ne I've got another one of these in my rocket fleet. I've never actually flown at high power, but I fly it a lot on F's and G's. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. First of all, we have the main body tube here, and it's got fin slots on the aft end, and there are a whole bunch of things stuffed into here. So we've got a coupler. It's really stuck in there. There we go. Okay, here's our shock cord. And then in the other end, here are the instructions. They're very basic. All right, and then we've got our 30-inch parachute. And that looks like everything that was inside the body tube. All right, let's see if the instructions give us a parts list here. Okay, we've got the parachute, we've got the shock cord airframe, motor mount tube, which is right here. It fell out earlier. Um, that's just an extra decal. You can put it on the rocket if you want. Alright, so inside here Alright, we have three centering rings and an eye bolt for the shock cord payload bay, and this can be set up um, either for dual deployment or as an actual payload bay. Polypropylene nose cone. Okay, now this comes with a quarter inch launch lug for use on quarter inch rods. Um, we'll also uh, have the option of putting rail buttons on there, either in addition to or instead of. All right, we've got three fins and a bulkhead. Parachute protector. Quick link. And then a vinyl decal set. Now, if you look at the suggested paint scheme here, uh, if you want to do the roll pattern and everything, you either have to paint that or use your own vinyl. Okay, um, The ones that come with it are the, the high-tech here, the HTs, and this wraparound band. It does not include the roll pattern. Okay, so it looks like we have everything here, and I'm going to clear away most of this, and we will get started on the build. So, first thing I'm going to do is take the main airframe tube here, and I'm going to skip down in the instructions a bit to the part with the launch lug. So I want to make a line and figure out where my launch lug is going to go before I do anything else. And so, they say just to sight in between two of the fins, uh, slots here. I'm actually going to measure it. So if we go from the center of one slot to the next, that's about seven, 
centimeters. So here we will go at three and a half centimeters. I'm going to give myself another little mark here, the same way. Okay, um, and now you can either use a piece of angle aluminum or go to a door frame and go ahead and draw the line all the way up. Now, you only need one line if you're going to do the launch lug or rail buttons. I'm probably going to do both so I have uh, a greater accessibility to launch materials. And so here I'm going to do it again. One fin over. Now in the instructions it just says make a, a line about six inches up, um, past, or actually it would be about 14 inches. I'm going to do it along the entire length just because it makes it easier to sight. Um, and with the rail buttons, um, I actually need to have the line that goes all the way up. We're pretty close to it. So I'm going to go over to my door frame and do this and I'll be right back. Now that I have my lines drawn, I can measure up 8 inches from the aft end, so right there, and then an additional 6 inches, which would be 14, right there. Okay, and that is where our launch lug here is going to go, is in between those two marks. And so the first thing in the instructions is actually to take some fine sandpaper and roughen all the places where we're going to be gluing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roughen this. And this doesn't take a lot, just a few strokes over the area. Basically we're getting rid of the glossy finish of the cardboard there. And then I'll do the same thing for the launch lug. Alright, and we'll do that for the fin slots here. So I'm just going to run it over a fin slot. And this will catch both sides of it. Now you really don't have to go beyond the, the ends of the fin slots because these fins don't have any overlap. The fin tab is the width of the fin. Right, so it looks like we got all of them there. Alright, we'll set those aside. Now for our motor mount, um, we're going to have to roughen the two ends. Alright, and then we'll also put a, a roughened ring somewhere in the middle once we figure out where our middle centering ring is going to go. Something else to think about here. Um, this is a cardboard and wood rocket, so theoretically you could use wood glue for everything here. Um, but when flying high power, the rocket's going to be subjected to a lot more stresses and a lot more heat than a lower mid-power rocket would. So I would suggest that if you're going to use wood glue, um, don't use it on the motor mount, because it may get too hot and the wood glue may soften. Locke recommends, and I concur with this, that you simply use epoxy for everything. Alright, next we're going to open up the centering rings here. We're just going to do some dry fitting. Okay. 
All right, and I'm going to pick one end of this and call it aft. I'm just going to mark it on the inside so I don't get it confused later. The ring that has the hole in it will go on the forward end, pretty much right at the very end. They recommend leaving about an eighth of an inch there, or about three millimeters or so. And the eye bolt will connect through this, and this is what will anchor the shock cord. All right, then we'll have a middle centering ring here. And I suspect it's going to need a little bit of sanding. That's going to go somewhere approximately here. Um, according to the instructions, five and a quarter inches from the aft end. Okay, so that's five and a quarter. That would come down to here. Okay. <clears throat> and then they recommend putting the aft ring at about the same position as the forward one. So just right on the very end there. Um, now, something you may have noticed by now in looking through the parts and the instructions, there's no motor retainer in this kit. Okay, They recommend using a friction fit with masking tape. I absolutely hate that idea, especially in high power. Okay, So I'm going to move mine forward a bit so that I can put a motor retainer on there. All right, and I'm going to use this polycarbonate retainer. Um, this is made by Launch Lab Rocketry. You, um, Aeropack also makes an aluminum one that works quite well. Now, one thing I am a little concerned about here is whether the retaining ring on this is too big. I think it's going to be okay. Right, but this needs to go that deep here. So I'm going to need to adjust this like that. And I prefer then to, to have that go right up against my centering ring. Okay. Now as we go along here, I'm going to show you something else that may cause you to adjust where you want your centering rings. All right, so now we're going to dry fit this into the rocket. The center ring does not want to go in and play nicely with others. I need to do a little sanding on those before we finish it. All right, so I'm looking through the slots here. There is my centering ring in the aft, and there's my center centering ring. What I want to have is those two at the two ends there. Now, if I take one of the fins, and test fit that, Okay, yeah, it needs pretty much the whole length there, so I'm going to pop this back out. Move that centering ring up a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't move while we're doing this. Alright, so now it's actually a little bit up above there. And then our fin goes in like that. What I am going to do with this is not assemble the entire motor mount quite yet. What I'll do is assemble these two rings and epoxy them into place. For the aft ring, I'm going to drill a couple of holes in it so that I can put string in it and pull this out. 
the reason I'm doing this is so that I have access to the interior while we're putting the fins in. Okay. So if I just put this in with two rings on it, like this, all right, I can still get down into there, and when I've got fins in there, what I'm going to do is tack the fins on, either with 5-minute epoxy or with uh, super glue, and then um, run fillets on the inside of those fins. And that's going to make this incredibly strong. Off camera, I sanded the rings a little bit to make test feeding easier. And so right now I've got the aft ring here at just the right spacing for my uh, engine retainer. I'm just going to make a mark here so I don't lose it later on. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and measure it against the slot here. And actually one of the easiest ways is to just measure the slots. So that's going to be 11.8 centimeters. So 11.8 centimeters here. Let's kind of get enough flexibility there. It's going to be right here. Okay, so that's where that one needs to be. One of my viewers told me about this little tip to help keep these things um, perpendicular. Wrap a layer of masking tape so that it is straight. Like that. And then you can just run that up against it. And it'll be pretty close. Alright, so now if we do this. Okay, now you can just barely see the edges of the two rings there. All right, and my fins fit. So that's where we want to put things. All right. So what I'll do here is I'm not going to epoxy the aft ring quite yet. We'll actually do that one after we do the fins. But in the meantime here, we can go ahead and do the final assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that back a bit. Roughen that up like we did the rest of the, the uh, motor mount tube. I'm going to go put on some gloves and mix up some epoxy. Here I've mixed up some 15 minute epoxy and I recommend using either 15 or 30 minute epoxy for this because it tends to be stronger and more heat resistant than the 5 minute epoxies. And here I'm just going to spread this around the roughened area that I made up there. Now push that ring back up to the tape there. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and peel the tape off. And that's kind of spreading it onto the ring, and that's fine. Um, I don't actually want a big fillet of epoxy on that side of the ring. Here I'm actually going to wipe off the excess. If we get epoxy down in this area, it could interfere with the fin tabs. And I don't want that to happen. So instead here I will put 
you feel it on this side. Now this part it doesn't need to be pretty. You can do whatever you whatever you need to do to get it in there. Um, but don't let it run up. Okay. And now on my forward ring, I'm gonna bring that back forward again almost to the edge. Here, I'm going to run the epoxy around. Now I'm going to wipe it away from that hole in just a moment. Press this down into the epoxy once more, leaving three or four millimeters there in the front. Okay, and then I'm going to put some up here. intentionally putting it up on the wood because that face of the wood is going to be exposed to ejection gases. All right, now I'm going to take some alcohol and wet my gloves with it here. And this will allow me to make very smooth fillets as we go around this. Right, and I said go ahead um, let it get into the wood, although for that center, the middle centering ring it's not going to be exposed to much. Okay, Make some more alcohol there. I'm going to turn this around and do the back of the forward centering ring. Okay, and I'm going to make sure it's particularly thin right here so we've got a place for There's going to be a nut that goes there, and so I want a flat place for it. And the same up here. Go ahead and get rid of the excess. And then particularly flatten that part out. And if you get it down in the hole, go ahead and clear that out. All right, and then I'm going to let that cure for the next half hour or so. The epoxy on the motor mount has hardened. And so our next step is to put on the eye bolt. And this is going to be where we attach our shock cord. Okay, so this is going to go through this hole in the centering ring. And so we'll put a washer on either side and one of the nuts I've already got installed here. So I'm just going to push this through. Might need to turn it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now, it's kind of a personal preference on how far in you want this to go. I'm going to leave mine at about that point. And then I will put on the other washer here. Alright, and then the other nut. And this does get kind of tight in here. Okay, now if you notice, the washer actually sticks out here a little bit. And so when we get done installing this, you'll need to take a file, um, or say a rotary tool with a grinding wheel on it, and bring that down flush with the centering rings. Alternatively, you can just leave the washers out, but I like to have the extra distribution of force that way. Right, now to do the final tightening, you will need a wrench here. And 
as I say, with a small amount of space here, we have to do it just a little bit at a time. Alright, so get those good and snug, but don't uh, make them so tight that you splinter the wood there. Alright, and now I'm going to make up a small amount of 5 minute epoxy to lock that in place. Alright, now I'm just going to put this on the threads on both sides of the bolt there. This will just keep it from coming undone. Right, I'm also going to fill in the gap there in the eye bolt itself. Right, some people like to replace the stock eye bolt with a um, welded or otherwise uh, forged type of eye bolt that does not have that little opening there. Um, with this particular rocket I have never had a problem with it. You might also consider upgrading to stainless steel if this is going to be a rocket that you launch a lot. That will just help keep the corrosion down. Alright, now once again we'll let this harden, and once it has, we'll install the shock cord and put the motor mount up into the body tube. The epoxy on the eye bolt is cured, and I've also ground off the excess metal there on the washers. Next we're going to attach the shock cord, and so go ahead and just run that all the way out. Put one end through the eye bolt here. And then we're going to take the opposite end and pass that through the loop. This is a fairly long shock cord, so that may take a moment here. Alright, so now we're going to pass that through. Pull that all the way back through. Okay, and then go ahead and pull that down and taut. Just like that. Okay, some people like to put a coating of epoxy on here. Um, it's not really necessary and it makes it harder if you do ever have to change your shock cord. All right, now we're going to take the whole shock cord once more and pass it down through the motor mount. And this will keep it out of the way as we go to epoxy in the motor mount to the body tube. Now for this next part we're going to need a, a fair amount of epoxy, basically what fills up one of these little weigh boats, and then a dowel. And what we're going to do is put a ring of epoxy on the inside of this tube as far as you can reach, but not so far as to miss the center ring. Okay, so if we position this about here, we need our epoxy ring to be in this region somewhere. Okay, now this may be hard to see on the video, but try it here. Alright, so I've just got a little wooden dowel here, and I'm going to put that in, and just circle around. I'm kind of doing this blind to begin with, we'll go and neaten it up here in a moment. Just some you get a little drop on there. We don't want any stray epoxy in the tube at this time, especially not at the aft end. All right, so now if I look down inside here, okay, looks like we need a little bit on this part.
And you can be pretty generous with this because when we push the engine mount in, it'll form a big fillet up in front. Okay, so now I'm going to take the motor mount here and we can remove the aft ring. Right, I'm going to pull this as much toward the inner part as I can. Right, so now we're going to put this in and push it forward until the middle ring reaches right at the edge of the slot. Right there. Okay, check it all the way around. Okay, so you just barely see it right there. And that's what we want. Okay, so now we're going to let that completely cure. And then we'll... While I'm waiting for the motor mount to finish curing, we can go ahead and get started on the fins here. Now these are plywood, probably birch. So it doesn't really matter which way they go. And the instructions recommend uh, rounding the trailing and leading edges. And so I'm going to start with some 100 grit sandpaper here. And the first thing I'm doing is just flattening out the corner edges. Okay, and then once you've got that, you just kind of roll your wrist here to impart curvature to it. All right, and you just keep doing that until you meet in the middle. Frequently check the cross sections to make sure you're not getting lopsided, and then just continue back and forth. And then uh, switch to 150 grit sandpaper to smooth out the leading edge here. All right, and then I'm going to use it on the face as well. Now these little squared areas here and here, these are the actual fin tabs, and we won't see those in the finished rocket. We'll leave those rough. Alright, I'm going to do the other two fins off camera, but before I leave the sanding here, I want to turn our attention to the nose cone. Okay, so this is, according to the instructions, um, polyethylene plus. I'm not sure what the plus is. I'm guessing they, they add something to it to make it a little bit stiffer. It feels like polypropylene. From a sanding and painting point of view, it's about the same. This is not going to retain paint very well all by itself. Okay. Also, we have some artifacts here from the molding process. So uh, we have two pretty prominent seams here. And we've also got these little nubbins here that I assume are from the molds. And so we're going to want to sand this um, fairly well. And I would start here using 100 or 150 grit sandpaper, depending on your preference. 
and just start with the seams and the little protrusions here to begin with. So that has knocked down most of the ridges here. Um, you can see there is a groove though that the sanding paper is not hitting. Same over here. All right, we do have a little bit of remnant of those two spots there. All right, so I'm going to continue on those, but I'm also going to sand the entire nose cone. And this is going to be necessary to help the paint stick to it. We'll also apply a special uh, primer that's made specifically for painting hard to paint surfaces like polyethylene and polypropylene. wipe this down with just a little bit of alcohol to clear away the sanding dust off the nose cone. The reason I use alcohol is it just evaporates quicker. You can just use water as well. Okay, so there you can see a lot of sanding streaks and such. You may be thinking that's going to make for one ugly rocket when we paint it. Um, and it would if we left it like this. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and this is optional, but one of the ways that we can fill in these grooves here is by using some contour putty. And there are several brands of this. Uh, mine happens to be testers. Uh, but what we do here is just run this along the seams. And you do have to work with this very quickly as it starts drying out almost immediately. Alright, and here you can just take a finger and smooth that in. Alright, and as I said, it starts drying so if you do too much smearing at once, it'll do that, it'll clump up. Okay, so just try and get it all in just in one smooth smear there. Um, you actually can use a little bit of alcohol on your finger to help smooth that in if you need to. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Keep this from rolling around. Right, it is a good idea to wipe off your finger before you do the next one. Because the, the partially dried stuff on your finger will interfere. Once again, we're just going to smooth that in in one action like that. I'm going to leave that alone. Um, this usually takes about two to three hours to the dry to the, to the point where you're, you can sand it. A lot of it depends on how thick this is. So I'm just going to set this aside, and then I'm going to work on my other two fins. I finished sanding the fins, and now I'm ready to put them on. The first thing I'm going to do is just dry fit them and make sure we don't have anything in the way. Okay. So everything is good there. Now re recall that I have not put in my aft centering ring, and I won't do that until after we have the fins fully installed. All right, so at this point, I'm going to tack these into place using some thick super glue. And then later, we'll add epoxy to strengthen them. Okay, so here, let's put on a thin layer of super glue. All 
All right, and make sure the leading edge is facing forward. All right, and we'll just install that, and that's going to stick to the motor mount. Okay, now here I'm going to check on the sides, make sure that we are indeed perpendicular. Just hold that in place for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to let this fully cure for about 10 minutes. Um, and then go on to the other two fins off camera. Here I've shifted perspective to my somewhat dirty floor. And I've made up oh, about a full ounce. For about 35 mill 30 milliliters here. A 15 minute epoxy and you can use 15 or 30 for this um, if you're relatively new to it and not used to working quickly I would go with the 30 but what we're going to do is put internal fillets into here and so along our fin tabs we'll run epoxy along the inside of the body tube and the outside of the motor mount tube where the fins connect there and part of the reason for using the longer epoxy is not only to give us more working time, but to allow some of the epoxy to move its way forward, where it will also form a fillet along the middle centering ring. Alright, so now I'm just going to take a dowel here, and this does take a little bit of patience. Um, I think one other thing I will do is block the engine tube there. All right, you'll notice I put my shock cord down inside so it's out of the way. This way I don't get epoxy on my shock cord accidentally. Okay, and now I'm just going to take a glob of epoxy here and just run it down along the insides. Okay, and I do. I am getting a little bit on the motor mount tube there. I will wipe that off before it cures. alcohol soaked tissue here to remove epoxy from where we don't want it, at least not at the moment. Alright, now I'm just going to look down inside there. Let's see how it looks. Let me see if I can get this to focus. So we can see down inside there, and it looks like we've got good coverage along the seams between the fins and the body tube and motor mount tube there. Alright, and since my epoxy is still well within the working time, I'm going to go ahead and attach the aft ring here. First, I just want to make sure that's going to go on. Yep, it is. Okay. For this, I'll use a smaller applicator. All right, so here I'm just, first of all, going to put a nice layer right around the motor mount tube. Most of that's going to get scraped forward, so you don't want to get it too thick. Alright, and then we'll do the same thing on the inside of the body tube. This 
next step is going to get a little bit messy, so I'm going to put on some gloves quickly. All right, now I'm going to add my centering ring here. I'm just going to push that down until it rests up against the fins. Okay, and then I'm going to quickly add some more epoxy here. form a fillet and I just go ahead and epoxy all over that wood just gives it some added protection from the exhaust gases okay. and some people like to wait and put the motor retainer on at the very last after they've done everything else I'm going to go ahead and put mine on now while I've got all this gooey epoxy ready. All right, try and trim up some of that so it's not just big blobs in there. And for a ring here, um, I'm just going to give it a really quick sanding on the inside. Here, I don't want to add epoxy to the ring, I want to add it to the tube so that any excess gets forced downward and not into the motor mount tube. Alright, I'm just going to put that right on there. Make sure it is centered. Okay. And now to get a little more alcohol. And just do a little bit of clean up here. And I am going to let that cure overnight. The internal fillets have come out really well. You can't see them here. Um, and my aft centering ring is well in place. And we've got uh, a layer of epoxy all the way around. Okay, motor mount retainer is good. Now, because of the internal fillets on here, we really don't need to have extensive external fillets for the purpose of strengthening the fins. In fact, if you look closely here, you can see where the epoxy is kind of oozed into the cracks there, which is really good. All right? But we really don't need to build up external fillets here unless you want them for increased aerodynamics. And for that, you, can, you don't need to use epoxy, although you can't. Um, a few options are you could use some wood filler or plastic uh, model contour putty, although using that much contour putty is going to get really expensive. Um, you can also use a paste type of epoxy. Okay, so this is the brand I have. There are some other ones out there, um, but this is a paste consistency. And you mix this just like you would any other epoxy, half and half. Um, it does take quite a lot of effort to stir it because it is a paste. But if you put that on there and after sanding it, um, this will result in really well built up uh, fillets. So if you, if you like that effect where the, the fin just kind of merges into the curvature of the rocket, that's a really good way to go. For now, I'm going to attach the launch lug. And as per the instructions recommendations, I have 
um, cut a slope into these and this is to help with aerodynamics now as you can see here it does make kind of a rough um, edge here so I'm going to try and cut that a little bit there um, but we can also make some fine adjustments to it once we have it glued to the rocket here I've made up a small amount of five minute epoxy Okay, and on the rocket here this is going to go along our line between the two tick marks that we made there and this has already been roughened up Okay, and I'm going to go ahead I actually roughened up the side that I cut for the taper there I'm going to do the other side here Now I'm just going to spread a layer of epoxy on here. Okay, and then I'm going to apply this to the line. Okay, now we just need to make sure this is straight along the line. And I'm going to sight down the rocket. And it's also in line. And so I'm going to let this cure, and then we'll come back and work on fillets. Here I've measured out equal amounts of epoxy paste. And this has about the same consistency as tar. So it's going to take a while to mix this up. All right, but it does need to be mixed to a consistent kind of medium gray color. I'm using a paper cup for this. I can actually probably use something heavier. Um, yogurt cups work really well, but I didn't have one handy. So I'm going to mix this for a few minutes here and come back when I've got it all set up. Alright, here I have all of my fillet areas masked off. And this way we won't get uh, epoxy on places where we don't want it and will be more difficult to remove later on. So I'm allowing for about 4 millimeters here um, on the tube and up on the fin. You can do wider if you like, it just depends on how thick you want your fillets. Okay, and then to apply it, I'm simply going to use this popsicle stick here. Now, if you go to hobby stores, you can find these in a variety of sizes. Um, and usually under, you know, they'll call them something like craft sticks or something like that. But basically, you can get these in different sizes, and that gives you a disposable applicator that's rounded. Okay, so here I'm just going to take some of my epoxy paste here that I've mixed up okay and I'm just going to apply that in here okay, not too worried about getting the right shape quite yet first we just need to work it down into the crack there Okay, and then once you've got it there, you can kind of shave some of this off. Alright, and now I'm going to shape it using the rounded end like that. Alright, now if you decide that that's too narrow, you can go up to a different size a uh, hobby stick there, a craft stick, and try it again. Okay, so now I'm going to do the 
facing side over here. All right, and you can also control the depth by the angle at which you hold your stick. So you're going to get a shallower depth if you're holding it perpendicular and a greater or a, a shallower fillet, I should say, if you're holding it straight up and a thicker fillet if you're holding it in, at an angle. Now this stuff has a working time of about an hour and then at room temperature it takes about 24 hours to fully cure. All right, but as you can see it does not flow very well. So you can pretty much go ahead and do all of your fillets at once. And as long as you keep it horizontal they shouldn't ooze very far. And I'm going to continue in this fashion until I get all of the fin fillets done. Alright, now that the fillets are in place, I'm going to remove the masking tape before it hardens. Now the epoxy is still going to have kind of a rough surface to that and once it cures um, you can add a finer filler like plastic model putty or you can just sand it the way it is. It does require pretty extensive sanding if you're going to do that. Now we've got some little edges here where the tape was and you have a couple of things that you can do here. Um, one is you simply ignore it and sand it later. Um, some of it you can try wiping away with a uh, ethanol soaked or actually ethanol or isopropanol either type of rubbing alcohol. Um, you can use that to remove little excess spots here. Okay, but you do have to be careful if you happen to bump into something, you may cause more problems than you solve here. Um, now we can try using a gloved finger here to help smooth that out. All right, so here I'm going to moisten my fingers of my gloved hand with some ethanol. Um, again, isopropanol works too. And I'm just going to use my finger here to smooth that in. Now. And again, if you're not comfortable doing this, um, just wait till it hardens and sand it later. Alright, I think that's probably good enough there. Now let's come back to the launch lug. I we'll try a little bit of smoothing on that.
So this needs to cure for at least 24 hours before we start sanding on it. And now if you have access to a uh, fairly large oven, um, you can actually heat this up to about 125 degrees Celsius, or not Celsius, 125 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is like, you know, August in Arkansas. Uh, that will drop the cure time to just a few hours. And you can check the instructions for your particular type of epoxy paste, but it should run about the same.